What's up everybody? Jason back again with another episode of Vendors where I sit down with leading wedding industry professionals and I have an intimate one-on-one -on -one conversation about all the questions that couples like you have. Today I'm sitting down with Elena Bazzini, a photographer out of Chicago, Illinois and one of my best friends to work with in this industry. Let's get started. Welcome back, guys. Today we're sitting down with Elena Bazzini, a photographer out of Chicago, Illinois. Elena, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. I'm super excited to do this with you. I'm super um, excited too. We've been we're working together for about four or five years now. Yeah, I think so. Four or five. Yeah. Uh, so tell me who you are and uh, what you do. I'm a Chicago-based wedding photographer. Um, I specialize in candid images, a photojournalistic style with a little bit of a twist. Um, and we've been doing weddings for about five years now. Loving telling couple stories across Chicago and beyond. Going into wedding planning, couples are bombarded with information. What are some really good things a couple should know when hiring a photographer? What I think is most important for couples hiring a photographer is to meet with people. I can't say it enough. I think there are some vendors you can really see their work online. You understand what they're capable of. You can taste the food, that kind of thing. I think the photographer is one vendor that people spend so much time with um, throughout the wedding day. And I don't know that all couples really think of it that way as someone that's going to be alongside with them everywhere they go. And so I do think that it's really important to have that vibe with the right person. Um, not only someone who understands what you're going for stylistically or, or something of that nature, but also someone who's present that you just enjoy being around. And I do think that that connection that you have on a person to person level um, is something you can kind of see if you have during that first in-person meeting. Mm -hmm. So I do always recommend recommend that with photography specifically. What's the difference between a couple looking for like an independent photographer versus one of the studios that has like 300 photographers? I'm the only photographer at my company. So when you hire me, you get me and an assistant. So all of that sort of rapport that we build through the meetings and emails and things like that, engagement shoots hopefully, is something that we're kind of building towards a relationship, I think. And I think a studio vibe is going to maybe send a person along with more of a checklist that has to come back having fulfilled you know these certain shots and nothing against any of those right. um, photographers but that someone who's maybe someone different did the meeting then it's going to shoot your wedding someone else might edit it I feel like I do all of those things and so when I'm editing I kind of know what's important to that couple I listen to all the speeches you know I had that heartfelt conversation beforehand about what was most important and so I think it's I think it comes out in the product and I think it allows couples to feel more like themselves sooner because they stop thinking about who's the person behind the camera and like they got a little closer to me and I'm a little nervous, you know, um, <laughs> that makes you, you know, uh, makes them nervous to feel filmed and mm -hmm. feel mm -hmm. photographed. But I feel like there's always that moment when I kind of become invisible to them and I'm just part of the group. I blend in with the bridesmaid um, as I'm shooting stuff and I feel like all of those things that have happened a year in the making right, up until right. that day, it really is kind of wonderful to see. And I love seeing couples relax, enjoy themselves. Those are the best photos. And spoiler alert, like weddings are not just a photo shoot. I feel like that's the, I want them to experience enjoying being there. Right, yeah. And so that also, there's a benefit to me in terms of the photos feeling natural, but there's an amazing benefit to them of, this didn't feel like a photo shoot I was a part of. I relaxed, enjoyed myself, and got great photos. Well, any couple who's done any work on Google so far has yes. found the knot and the wedding wire, and they found that amazing checklist that we've all been asked a hundred times. <laughs> yeah. um, what of those questions are valid or what have you seen sure. come through that they should know? Two things come to mind. The first thing that I think is important for couples to know is when looking at portfolios to look for a range of lighting. But if you see just a website full of all outdoor, all naturally lit, beautiful photography, mm. um, that can be very seductive. I feel like it looks lovely. Um, but if you're getting married in the winter or if you're having a reception after dark, which everyone is, right. um, or if you're in like a industrial space versus a white tent or something, I would just look for 
night shots mm -hmm. to compare to those beautiful mm -hmm. outdoor daylight shots um, that are a little easier technically to accomplish right. from a photography standpoint and also to look for venues and timing situations that are similar to what they might be planning. Good point. That's fantastic. Can you talk a little about that? Yeah, sure. Um, I think it's funny like what we get attracted to on Pinterest or um, Instagram, but you'll get inspiration boards mm. from clients who have the best of intentions, but they will be in vineyards in Tuscany. Right, <laughs> and right. you're like, I want to take this photo as well, but you know, we're going to be in downtown Chicago yeah. in December. You can just sort of get romanced by those pictures mm. online. And I think it's important to look for something that looks like what you're going to have yeah. um, in terms of lighting too. I think there's just a different skill set in photography um, in terms of creating light versus what you can find outside on a nice right. summer right. day. Someone who can roll with bad weather, sunsets, industrial dark spaces in downtown, dark churches. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like all of that is gonna, uh, it's gonna comprise so much of what your wedding day is that you should keep an eye out for that in their portfolio or at least ask them to see a full wedding. Good. From start to finish. Very good point. Uh, do you find that doing an engagement session helps enhance that. So on the day of their wedding, they're like, we've already been in front of a camera before. This yes. is no big thing. Can you talk a little about that? Yeah, I do think there's a big difference between couples who I've done engagement shoots with and ones I haven't. Um, it's not to say you can't have fabulous wedding photography without right. it, because I definitely don't do them for every single client. Um, but I do feel like there's another day that we got to spend together hanging out. If there's any nerves around photography, which most people have some level of nerves, some more than others, I feel like that evaporates yeah. at the engagement shoot instead of the day of the wedding. And right. that just gets you to that invisible moment that I talked about a little bit sooner. And I think, especially grooms, I feel like always at the end, of an engagement shoot say, that was so much easier than I thought it was gonna be. Right. And so they're just sort of amazed that it could be fun, you know? And I think that that's a really special thing to have prior to the wedding so that you can even enjoy that day so much more. Yeah, absolutely, so much stress-free. Yeah. When I, when I talk with couples who want a little bit of lower price, sure. um, I always say, there is a chance that you can find that diamond in the rough. Sure. But the reason why you would pay someone what they're asking to be paid is because they've had the wisdom, they've had the training. The big question every couple, every couple goes to with any vendor is what's your price? So what is an average price for a wedding photographer? And I granted, the market's different everywhere. If sure. you're in Nebraska, if you're in California, if you're in New York, the prices are wildly different. So we're here in Chicago. What is the average price for a wedding photographer? Um, gosh, there's such a range. There's such a huge market here. I feel like the price range that I'm in now is between five and seven mm -hmm. for a full day wedding photographer. Albums, engagement shoots and stuff, different photographers will include that or have them as add-ons. Mm -hmm. But gosh, there's a whole range of price. Um, obviously, that's not just the day of. Right. When some people think of that, they think, oh, we're just getting a couple photos for that. You're doing an immense amount of work before sure. that. So talk, talk to us about uh, all the stuff that goes in, into that. Farthest in advance I think I've ever been hired is like a year and nine months. Okay. Um, but it's usually about a year engagement. And so through that time, it's engagement photography, helping a lot with planning. I think that that maybe doesn't um, occur to a lot of clients that your photographer will be part of your planning, but um, especially if people don't have a wedding planner, right. that job of a timeline kind of falls to me. I do a questionnaire that kind of helps me get to know clients. There's a few in-person meetings in there, maybe even a scouting trip. I've done that many times um, mm -hmm. to check out new venues, check out some kind of interesting new view of a location that they're thinking of going to for their mm -hmm. portraits. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of work leading up to it. Now that's just leading up to it. Sure. What about the day of? Like you're not just taking photos the day of. What are some of your other duties that you find <laughs> you have to, to accomplish? During the wedding day? <laughs> it's different at every wedding for sure. Um, but again, as I mentioned earlier, like I'm, I'm there with the bride and groom pretty much every minute for sometimes 10, 11 hours. So I've done, I've done it all. I've done coffee runs. I have helped people lift the wedding dress to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I've helped people bustle wedding dresses. I've helped light candles at the reception space when we're a few minutes behind, you know, flipping the room. 
Yeah, you can find me pretty much doing anything to keep things on time and keep things moving. Um, I bring umbrellas when it rains. I have a collection of 12, I think, clear matching umbrellas. So you can find me handing those out to bridesmaids. And yeah, anything that kind of needs, I'm a team player, right? Anything that needs uh, help, I feel like I'm a second set of hands in addition to photography. Now, we've just talked about pre and during. <laughs> There's a whole other world after a wedding. Yeah. And I mean, how often do you use a photo straight out of the camera as is? Never. Yeah. Not once. R right. Right. So there's there's editing. There's color correction. There's a world of work. Let's sure. talk, talk talk about that. I think it's about forty hours I do per wedding. That's what I've um, kind of Afterwards. Cl clocked it at. Yes. Yes. Um, in terms of editing, yes. Mm. And that can it can vary, um, but that just includes backing everything up in several different places, which is important. So it includes backing everything up, editing everything, culling through everything is actually quite um, time consuming as well. I tend to shoot quite a bit. What, what does culling mean? Ah, um, taking every photo that I have shot throughout the day and editing it down to the sort of 800 to 1,000 that a client will see as a finished product. So if you're culling down to 800 to 1,000, how many shots are you taking during the day? It can depend. Um, between myself and a second shooter could be upwards of five or 6,000. A lot of couples that, that I've heard from, that I've talked to, sure. they want everything. They say, you're taking 6,000 photos. Why sure. don't I get 6,000 photos? Yeah. Why don't they get 6,000 photos? Yeah, I've had that question quite, I've had it recently actually. Um, I don't give all the raw photos for any reason. I mm -hmm. think there's so much in there that's working towards a shot you know, setting up a composition, trying a few different angles on something, waiting for a laugh, waiting for a tear, that kind of stuff. You're sort of waiting for moments to happen and setting up compositions in between. There's also pictures with people's eyes closed, pictures that aren't ones that are super flattering. Um, pictures of my feet, I get a few of those every yeah. now and then too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there's something to be said for you hired a person to create a finished product. Right. Right? You wouldn't go to the bakery and ask for the ingredients. You'd ask for the cake, right? That's what they sell you. Yeah. You know, to me, I feel like I would like you to remember your wedding this way. Yes. Um, and it's also a product that I'm putting my name on that I'm proud of. So we don't hand over unedited images. It feels like the ingredients to what we're trying to make for you. How early should a couple be booking with a photographer? It really ranges for me, like I said, anywhere between a year and nine months to 30 days out, I've been booked. I don't recommend 30 days out. That's so short. Yeah, it's so short. And I think it just depends. You'll find less availability out there in any vendor as you get right. closer to your wedding date. But I find a lot of people who are booking early are just, they have longer engagements and they wanna take a little break from planning to enjoy being engaged, which yeah. everyone tells you. <laughs> they told me that too when I was engaged. Are you taking time to enjoy being engaged? No, I'm planning a <laughs> wedding. <laughs> so I think that that's a nicer thing about a longer engagement is to kind of check off some of those things. You have more the pick mm. of who you want out there. Um, the closer to your wedding date, there'll just be less availability, but it's kind of the luck of the draw in terms of dates. They fall where they fall in terms of my calendar. Um, but I recommend somewhere around a year, I think. Anywhere between eight and 12 months feels like a good amount of time for me to do all the things that we mentioned earlier. Questionnaire, right. a couple in-person meetings, maybe a walkthrough. Throughout your wedding career, you have had amazing, oh God, you have had amazing work. I oh. drool over your photos. You're nice. What wow. are some of your proudest moments? I just love people um, being happy. Mm. That's what we're all after. We're all after everyone having a wonderful time, um, having fun, enjoying themselves. So those are, I get to have those moments a lot. So that's really, that's what keeps you in this industry. I feel like those joyful moments, like pure joy moments are what keeps you in the industry. Um, and weddings have all sorts of stress. Anyone planning one, anyone who's ever been to one will tell you that there's some stress around weddings. Um, but those pure joyful moments that you get to experience, every weekend, I feel like me and you get a front row seat to those mm -hmm. joyful moments. And I have to stop myself sometimes to just take in how amazing that is. And so that makes me feel really proud to be a part of those special moments in people's lives and to be documenting those memories for many generations to come. 
Uh, planning your wedding can be stressful and you want your wedding day to be perfect, but something will go wrong on your wedding day. I have shot a metric ton of weddings and I have never seen a wedding go on time. Like something will go off on a day. But if you go into your wedding day knowing that something will go wrong and the worst thing that's gonna happen is you're getting married to the love of your life, it is still a perfect day. Half of our job as whatever artistry we do is fixing the fuck up. Mm. Something will go wrong. How do we fix it? A, so no one ever knows, and B, so it makes the day even better. So what are some examples where you've had to fix the fuck up? I'll have to go with timing um, mm. as well. I think that's something that comes up almost every time. We always pad the schedule. That's something that I do to preemptively <laughs> fix the fuck up. Yes. Um, is to know how much time I think things will take and then add some time um, to that. So that's something that I feel like I'm helping in advance, hopefully. I also am a big fan of turning bad weather into awesome photos. <laughs> Perfect example. Perfect example. Um, and so I feel like a lot of people will hire me because of that snow photo that you mentioned. Um, right. People having July weddings will hire me because of that snow photo that you mentioned. But in my portfolio, I put rain weddings. I have two or three of my most liked photos on Instagram are snow and rain. And so I think that you are taught that that's a disaster scenario. And sure, you can't do um, as many outdoor photos in a park with your whole group that you might have planned, but we could do something cool inside with couches, um, set up the bridal party in an interesting way. It's more unique, I feel like, and then take a few shots with rain and snow and all of this sort of the elements around us. It ends up being something that stands out. But I feel like when people see those snow photos and rain photos, they feel like Elena can handle this can handle no matter what's happening right. and then we can worry less enjoy ourselves more. So we've talked really briefly about uh, when things go wrong, but what's a plan B? How do you handle a plan B? A plan B for like photo locations, I usually have in place before, if there is some type of weather or something like that where we can't be outside mm -hmm. at all. Um, we'll have some indoor backup locations kind of already planned. Um, I'm usually the type who is a weather forecast watcher, um, which is something I don't really trust until like three days, four days Absolutely. before. Yeah. So I'll tell brides that too, if it's like, they're looking at the 14 day forecast, you're yeah. like, it's okay, let's talk, you know, four days out. <laughs> um, but here's some ideas for some spots we can go. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I always have a plan B in place and I usually ask people, you know, here are some spots we had in mind. If in the moment we see some cool light somewhere or we get struck by some other idea, like how flexible are you to change course? If they trust us to have that creative um, sort of I and then uh, the plans can kind of change so I let people know that in advance like it can kind of we can set a plan and we can kind of get yeah. there eventually ebb and flow. yeah ebb and flow and it's nice to have some things in mind but I kind of feel like cool stuff will pop up and we'll maybe detour towards it so we've already touched on it but I want to touch on it again because I, I think it is important um, when couples are looking for wedding vendors it's eye-opening how expensive weddings can be. So can you talk about how you break down your price? Like where does that money go? Myself and an assistant are there for the number of hours that we're contracted to, so there's our time there. There's the time spent in advance that we already talked about and the time spent afterwards, mm -hmm. which we already talked about as well. I'm constantly also upgrading gear to the latest stuff, um, lenses. Well, I, I, how much are, are lenses? <laughs> Um, I don't think I've ever bought a lens that was less than two grand, I don't think. Gosh, I like the nice ones, but um, yeah, the latest sort of camera bodies, lenses, that's to protect clients. It's for great image quality, of course, but it's also to protect clients to have new gear that's not tired, has that sort of dual card slot capability. Um, so that's something that you're obviously seeing benefits from as a, as a wedding couple as well. Um, sort of state-of-the-art stuff that's going to stand the test of time, right? Education. I First of all, I have a degree in photography, um, and so that is a big investment for sure. Yeah, and I usually try to keep that up to date. Every year I do at least one conference, one kind of travel excursion um, to learn from other people, to sort of share ideas, see what's going on in the industry. 
mm-hmm. and keep yourself up to date um, with trends and strategies and inspired to um, keep yourself inspired. So liability insurance, mm-hmm. Perfect. Um, which is something that you should ask vendors. I think most mm-hmm. some venues will require documentation of that before you're allowed yes. to work in certain venues. So that's um, super important. Uh, website upkeep, um, image hosting, hard drives, all of that kind of good stuff. So you're stuff. saying there's a lot more <laughs> than just those 10 hours that you're at that wedding. Yes, there's okay. a lot more. There, yes. There's a lot that goes into yes. this. <laughs> uh, you brought up a really good point. What are some things couples should be aware of in a photographer's contract when they're booking with them? Sure. Um, I think it's important to know about the delivery of images. I feel like that's something that every photographer will kind of do differently in terms of what your rights are to the images, how soon they'll be delivered, and in what form. I feel like that's sort of something that we all kind of do differently, Mm. Um, whether you have printing rights or not, whether you will have high-resolution images or web-resolution images. I feel like these are all things that you should have a conversation about um, and also know what's laid out in your contract there in terms of those delivery times and file sizes and printing rights and sharing rights, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Something a lot of couples are wanting to know is how can they save money? You know, weddings are expensive, so how can they save money with a photographer? I think a lot of people who are looking to save money might skip the engagement photo shoot. Um, That's one way. Mm. Um, I do like to do those, but um, some photographers will offer like a discounted price maybe during the week. I've done that in the past. Mm. My Saturdays and Sundays are super booked. And so I have done slightly discounted engagement shoots if you're willing to meet up after work on a Tuesday, do an hour long shoot, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Off season, I know a lot of people will give discounts maybe for winter weddings and things like that. We tend to also be pretty busy through December and sometimes January. So we don't always offer any kind of winter discount, but I know that there's vendors of all kinds out there who might offer that. I've also had people delay a wedding album. They've asked me later, you know, maybe for our first anniversary, can we put the wedding album together, second anniversary? There's never any sort of deadline that that has to be done. Mm. I'll always have those files if a couple comes to me a few years later and says, our parents want their album, they want to help us with ours as a present kind of delaying that and, and, and getting it later right. instead of committing to that sort of price tag up front. And it makes it easier on them up, up front that they can come back and I can do that. Totally. It's a little less stress. Totally. Um, Elena, thank you so much for spending time with us today. It was uh, fun. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, if someone were so inclined to reach out to you, to ask you questions, to book with you, to work with you, or just to get to know you better, what's the best way they could reach you? The best way to find me is probably through my website, uh, elenabazziniphotography.com. Instagram, Facebook, email is all available on there. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. We hope this episode of Vendors helps you on your wedding planning. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and to share to make sure you and your fellow planning couples don't miss a single episode. If you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to check out our entire conversation in the podcast. Be sure to check out all of our episodes about these amazing wedding industry professionals. We'll see you next time on Vendors. Vendors is produced and edited by Night Owls Media. More information can be found at nightowlsmedia.com.